Apple's been on a bit of an open source tear lately. I already covered Pickle and it seems like a lot of y'all love that, the idea of an Apple-based JSON alternative. But now they're challenging something a little bit bigger. They're challenging all of the open source machine learning models that we've seen published from everybody from open source companies like Mistral to Facebook and Meta themselves with Llama. There's a bunch of things here I just never expected to see, be it a hugging face account from Apple or an open source GitHub repo actually acknowledging AI ML stuff. Historically, Apple has had AI in their tools and technology and their operating system, certainly in their hardware. But they went out of their way to never say AI in any of their conversations. Yet here we are with Apple making two unexpected drops, just sharing a bunch of Cornet training deep neural network stuff. Yeah. This is this is not what I expected at all. But here we are, we have a lot to talk about. And Naman dropping other important links. ML Explorer is Apple as well. This is crazy. The speed at which Apple went from like quietly being a powerhouse in AI stuff to loudly being is very unexpected. So this was end of last year. Okay, I didn't know that they were doing all of this already. Good to know this already existed. This video is a Llama one, version 1.7 one, billion model implemented in MLX and running on an M2 Ultra. Okay, I knew about most of this, that you could run Llama on Apple Silicon. I didn't know that it was through things Apple had actually open sourced. That's cool, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about the fact that Apple has a Hugging Face account. For those of y'all who aren't deep enough in AI to know what Hugging Face is, kind of like Code Sandbox for AI stuff, where you can play with AI models and training stuff in the browser. Obviously, they're running a bunch of hardware behind the scenes. You have to like spend money renting a GPU to try it all. But this gives you a single place like a sandbox to actually play with all sorts of different models for all sorts of different things. I've even generated assets for YouTube thumbnails using Hugging Face in the past. So it's cool to see them not going and inventing all their stuff in a corner, but actually throwing the stuff that they're building in the place we're already hanging out, which in this case is Hugging Face. We have their open ELM pre-trained models, which if I click these, should actually let me go to GitHub for them too. The Apple sample code license. Let's read this license. I'm actually curious. I love that Apple refuses to use MIT or some shit, so they wrote their own. This Apple software is supplied to you by Apple Incorporated in consideration of your agreement to the following terms, yada yada. If you do not agree with these terms, don't modify. Apple grants you a personal non-exclusive license under Apple's copyright to use, reproduce, modify, and redistribute the Apple software with or without modification in source and or binary forms, provided that if you redistribute the Apple software in its entirety and without modifications, you must retain this notice and the following text and disclaimers. Actually, a pretty generous license. This is like an Apple-flavored MIT. I'm into it. Open ELM is the new open source model that they're giving out as Apple. How crazy is it that Apple released a product starting with open that's a language model thing? This is, I did not expect this at all. We introduce Open Elm, a family of open source efficient language models. Another thing I have to call out, it's very rare for Apple to directly cite the individuals who did a thing at Apple. I have the example of forever ago where um, Apple filed a pull request to OBS under this weird uh, developer experience GitHub. The developer ecosystem engineering, yeah. This really weird, like almost spooky account coming from Apple that was used to anonymously contribute to things like OBS. Not anonymous in the sense that we didn't know it was Apple, but anonymous in the sense we didn't know who at Apple did it because this was done by Apple as an org. This account was weird. The pro profile picture before was this, this weird black, super low pixel, low quality Apple black background thing. They've since changed it to be an M3 Max logo, which is weird, but... This is Apple's vague anonymous GitHub account that they've used for contributions in the past. So going from that to just straight up naming the individuals who did the thing is a huge shift for how Apple works. Yep. So Open Elm uses a layer-wise scaling strategy to efficiently allocate parameters within each layer of the transformer model, leading to enhanced accuracy. We pre-trained Open Elm models using the Cornet library. We released both pre-trained models and instructions tuned models with 270 million, 450 million, 1.1 billion, and 3 billion parameters. This is a weird variety compared to like Llama 3. Yeah, so it's 8 billion and 70 billion parameters are the two models that Meta put out with Llama 3 versus 270 mil, 450 mil, 1.1 bill, and 3 bill. Very strange spread of options here. For those who aren't familiar with this concept, parameters are pieces of information that are used by the ML and like training process to create the, the model of what data goes where. In the end, an LLM is effectively just autocomplete where you put in a word and based on the statistics of an infinite amount of information that they have access to, what's the next word most likely to be? And it does that over and over again to generate results. 
So what's crazy here is the inputs that they're using to generate these models to, to make these mappings vary from 270 million inputs to 3 billion versus what Meta is doing with a 70 billion parameter model. Interesting to see the variety here. That said, these smaller models tend to be much smaller outputs where like a 70 billion model might be hundreds of gigs. A 270 million parameter model might be like a gig or less. So Llama 3's 8 billion parameters, they somehow got that down to 4.7 gigs for 8 billion parameters versus 70 billion parameters is 40 gigs. So obviously this takes much more time to run, is way more data. You can't even fit that all in memory for most people versus the 4.7 gigs, you can throw that in memory. So these, as simple as the difference might seem, behave entirely different. And the 8 billion parameter model is gonna run much faster than the 70 billion parameter model. So depending on what you're doing, that makes sense to use these differently. I am curious to see how long it's gonna take for Apple to sneak their stuff in here, because it seems like they want to be part of these communities, judging by what they've posted here. Our pre-training data set contains refined web deduplicated pile, a subset of red pajama. I don't know what any of those things are. I'm not that deep. Totaling approximately 1.8 trillion tokens. Insane that they have that much data that they're using for things. Nuts. We provided an example function to generate output from Open Elm models loaded via Hugging Faces Hub in generateOpenElm.py. The release of Open Elm models aim to empower and enrich the open research community by providing access to state-of-the-art language models trained on publicly available data sets. These models are made available without any safety guarantees. Consequently, there exists the possibility of these models producing outputs that are inaccurate, harmful, biased, or objectionable. Thus, it's imperative for users and developers to undertake thorough safety testing and implement appropriate filtering mechanisms tailored to their requirements. Yep, the usual disclosure. There's an important piece here that I want to talk more about, though, that this is trained on publicly available data sets. One of the interesting things about Facebook versus a company like Apple is that Facebook has a shitload of data that they arguably probably shouldn't. Facebook knows so much about you. Apple doesn't. They've leaned really heavily into privacy, so much so that it's why Siri sucks. If you've used an Android phone and an iPhone, it's pretty apparent how much better Google Assistant is than Siri. And a lot of why is the amount of data they have access to about how users use the phone, how these responses go over, what things the user's done recently that might be relevant to the thing that you're asking for. There's just so much more data that Google has access to in order to make better recommendations. Whereas Apple just doesn't have that information. They're relying entirely on their ML. As such, they've leaned heavily into really powerful ML chips on device because they don't want to have this data on their server because they don't have the data on the server. But that comes at the cost of the quality of the data they have and the amount of data they have just aren't there. So as such, they have to train on public data because they don't really have much else, which is interesting that uh, they're working so hard to lean into the open side, but also makes sense because they kind of have to do the way they position themselves. It also means things are going to be more private and trusted because you can go look and use all of these things yourself. Let's take a look at the GitHub for Cornet. Though, this is one of the most interesting pieces. It's a library for training deep neural networks. Also has 1.1 thousand stars already, even though it came out a little bit earlier today. Cornet, a library for training deep neural networks. Up until this point, most of the open source models have an open source model, not the actual training things. So the way the model was created isn't open source. The data might not even be open, but the model that they result in is. It's almost like, imagine that a bakery gives away their cake for free, but they don't tell anyone how they made the cake. Apple's now showing you exactly how they made the cake. Very interesting. Coronet's a deep neural network toolkit that allows researchers and engineers to train standard and novel small and large scale models for a variety of tasks, including foundation models like CLIP and LLM, object classification, object detection, and semantic segmentation. Below is the list of publications from Apple that use Coronet. That's a lot of things that Apple has published about this stuff that I never would have guessed. Pseudo supervision for the visual enhancement. A fast hybrid vision transformer using structural reparameterization. They're all in on this, holy shit. I knew Apple was like a closeted AI powerhouse, but seeing it laid out in front of me like this is kind of insane. I I did not expect this. How's their stock doing? Ah, uh, yeah. Suddenly this makes much more sense. Apple does not want to be left behind. Apple always was positioned such that like, just simply due to the nature of Apple Silicon, they've had a huge competitive advantage in AI stuff, but they've kept that really quiet. Normally they don't, do these things so publicly. But due to the fact that there is so much buzz around AI, the like concept and idea, rather than the actual functional uses, it seems like they've chosen to just let the world know, hey, by the way, we're good at AI too. In fact, we're one of the best. Because this is nuts. How recently did all of these things come out? So like, none of this is super new. 
Apple's always quietly had these types of crazy research and things going on. Like another fun industry kept secret that's not that secret is that Apple helped design the USB-C standard. They're one of the biggest contributors to it. They probably contributed the port itself. Apple is not scared to contribute things to the greater ecosystem. They just don't do it without reason. So for them to make this GitHub repo and make all of these reasons, it's clear they're trying to signal to the world, hey, by the way, we know what we're doing here. Here's what we've done if you want to join along and try it out too. I just did not expect this to be as absurdly large as it is. They're even using Git LFS because the repo is so massive. And of course, good old Jupyter Notebook. I never expected to see a Jupyter Notebook instruction set in an Apple repository. More fun points being made by chat. Apple's also heavily involved with Matter and the Internet of Things stuff, as well as QI2 being MagSafe. They also, the Qi, QI, whatever you want to call it, charging standard, they were very involved in, and they pushed it really hard. They easily could have made up their own bullshit when they added wireless charging, but instead they used the Qi standard and then they pushed the Qi standard. They've been forced to use RCS, the SMS alternative in the EU, but their hesitation is that RCS has no encryption standard. Rather than paying Google to use theirs and let them have access to all that data, they've actually proposed an open standard for encryption for RCS. RCS and they're trying to get that in before they have to comply. Apple's generally pretty good about these types of things. I've just never seen them go from zero to 100 quite this fast. It's weird. Also, yes, I know USB Type-C is an inverted lightning cable. It's The design of USB-C is fascinating. You can cut consensus expense by just making it a torrent. Yep. Yeah, the fact that so many of these models can be just torrented is insane. I did a video about Mistral dropping this before and nobody cared. The Mistral Twitter is such a wild ride. They did their original announcement in June last year. They didn't say anything for a while. Then in September, they just dropped a magnet link. If you don't know what a magnet link is, you're not into piracy enough. This is how you torrent things. You drop this in your torrent tracker solution and you just get the file. This is how they've released all their models. They just tweet the magnet link. And that's when they forgot to give the uh, confirmation. So they went and added it after. But like, yeah, also LOL at the end. And their like banner image is word art. <laughs> it's something else. It's surreal. So like this has been the state of open source AI stuff for a while is this company Mistral showing up and just memeing their way to the top. And now we have the furthest opposite, which is Apple Cornet with their actual Apple GitHub. They're not throwing this on the developer experience or whatever. They're putting this on the actual Apple GitHub and really partaking in this ecosystem. I never would have thought. I genuinely could not have imagined that Apple would come out this hard, guns blazing, to be a meaningful player in the AI open source space. This just made the next WWDC significantly more interesting. What do you guys think, though? Should I spend more time covering this stuff? I know I don't normally talk about AI on the channel, but I have been playing with it a lot more. So let me know in the comments if I should make more content about this stuff or maybe even play with these models in the future. Until next time, peace nerds.